I will start by saying it's an honor to sit across from you both today, and it's great to see you, my friend. Thank you. My fellow Texan here. Right. <laughs> I had him on the radio back when I was still doing radio, and now, because of his good luck charm, he's my good luck charm, now I just do television. Uh, and and we get to talk Disney. Matter of fact, I know what you're going to remember, my Mickey Mouse tattoo on my left leg. Yeah. I sh oh, I'm sorry, no, i got to no. show it to you. It's still there. Ah! <laughs> and I, uh, big Disney fan here. Yeah, I guess so. I want to start from the very beginning, and I want to know how the world of Bambi found its way to you. Uh, well... Good question. Um, my father was a screenwriter in Hollywood for a number of years and knew what was going on and knew Walt and uh, heard that there was a new um, animated feature uh, about to be produced. And uh, so he took me over to the uh, lot to uh, audition for the part of Bambi. And uh, I didn't have the right voice for that. And uh, so it sort of got rejected or just didn't get called back uh, until a few weeks later after they had had an opportunity to re the animators were re-listening to all the voices and, and obviously they're the ones who were doing the creative work artistically and f kind of envisioning what they could do with these voices, I think. And uh, they liked my voice. Uh, one of them said, hey, that kid would be great for the rabbit, and that was it. Love that. Donnie, I want to hear your story. You've told me before, but I want to hear it again. Well, I had been in several movies as a child, with all the silly curly hair, okay, with Frankenstein and all those guys, right? And um, we're at a home in Westwood, California. Mr. Disney called, personally called my mother in a kitchen phone on there, I remember well, and invited us to come up to, to uh, look at me to be the facial model. This is May of 1940. 1940! <laughs> Ancient history, right? <laughs> but we're still vertical. <laughs> and uh, my mother did not know much about Disney. That's the honesty of that then. Nor did I. Uh, age, age five, as I remember. Just barely five. Uh, and she called around, made some inquiries about uh, Disney, and called our agent. Now, I remember you well, so you're going to enjoy this story, okay? She called my agent. <clears throat> he was from New York. I did not like him much already, that's the honesty of that. Very very crisp fellow with my mother, right? So he came to the house, she told him about Mr. Disney's invitation. He went ballistic. <laughs> oh no, we don't want Dunley to do that. We don't want him in a cartoon, blah, 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 right? And he got real rude with my mother. That's not the first time, and I, I know you will enjoy this of all people, I fired him. <laughs> Five years old, and I fired my agent, bang, get out of here, right? So he went up to Disney, uh, no freeways in, long, long trip, all the stop signs. I couldn't wait to get there, but that time I heard, oh my gosh, that's where they make all these funny little creatures that are gonna be all over the place, I'm gonna have a ball. Tell me about your memories of Walt Disney. Uh, well, the, the primary uh, memory that I have is uh, uh, going with Walt out to the, uh, the, 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 the uh, lot had a small zoo on it with uh, uh, deer and rabbits and a few other creatures, um, primarily for the benefit of the uh, animators who could see the anatomy and the way these creatures moved. And, uh, but he took me out there just as a break to, to uh, show me what was going on. And, uh, uh, so I got a chance to hold the bunny in my arms and, and uh, realize that that was what I was portraying. And uh, that was a very special, special time. Um, other than that, I was dealing with, you know, voice uh, directors and so forth on the actual recording. Um, so I didn't have nearly as much interaction with uh, Disney as, as Donnie did, but... Uh. Same question for you, Donnie. He was an example. He really was an example. I've been 25 years in the Marine Corps. I've, saw, I've seen leaders and guys who should be, right? He was a positive example. He's all over the place working. Wasn't a prima donna executive, okay? Um, <laughs> when uh, I got invited to be the voice, we were sitting at a table, I think the cafeteria, it may have been new, 
then, okay? But we're sitting at a table, a couple of folks, my mom and me, and I'm having ice cream. I remember the ice cream, specifically, it was colored. I had not seen colored ice cream, okay? And Mr. Disney came up, uh, very cordial, like he always was, and talked to my mom and me, mostly to my mother, and said, we want to try Donnie out for the voice of Bambi. People later have said, oh, that must have been a, a business meeting and very sophisticated baloney. No, we didn't. We said something very clever, like, you bet. Any favorite lines? I know you gave me the rap, but I got to ask, favorite lines from the film? Um, there, there are a couple of favorite lines I have. And uh, uh, when Thumper makes a, a sort of a bad comment, his mother says, uh, uh, now, uh, Thumper, what did your father say this morning? And so Thumper looks a little downfall and he says, uh, well, if you can't say something nice, don't say nothing at all. And that's I, a good, good, good statement for a lot of kids these days who aren't always saying something nice. I've got a tag on to that because I use it all over the place. With children in schools, orphans here, Salvation Army, Christmas time, I use it all, I steal from him all the time. That line brings twinkles to children's eyes and I hope it never goes away. Don't say nothing unless it's nice.